Frank Frazetta, the renowned fantasy illustrator, is original and unprecedented in laying the groundwork for the visual aesthetics of fantasy art today. Another artist, director Ralph Bakshi, the innovative creator of such uniquely animated films as Heavy Traffic, Lord of the Rings, and American Pop, inspired by the art of Frazetta, works together with the artist to successfully capture the passion, vitality, and adventurous worlds that Frazetta created for the exciting new feature motion picture Fire and ice. The amazing thing about this animated feature is that it was photographed as a live action feature first a technique called rotoscope. This process achieved a heightened reality of movement and action in the animation, even things as subtle as slow motion. Join us now in a demonstration of how this process is incorporated into the making of an animated feature film. A single scene in the movie travels through many departments in the animation studio, beginning with this artist, who has received from the live action editor photographs of every frame of the action to be used in the film. This key animator is responsible for the first drawings from the photographs, helping to keep continuity and control over the film. His drawings, when approved, move on to the animator for the creation of action. Okay, these are the photostats, the rotoscope photo models of the scene. And as in any animation scene, we look for the poses that will tell the story, overlapping action and follow through, and then we exaggerate the action and caricature it as we go along. Uh, we work with the director in a similar manner to the actors, taking the suggestions and building and improving the scenes, working directly with him. This four second scene, which is seven feet of uh, screen footage, may take the better part of a week to do, to make the drawings. Using these key drawings, we work our extremes uh, throughout the scene, basing our technique of drawing of extremes to the technique of drawing that is found in the keys. And any action, invented action, like the flip of the helmet off the head, we will follow through in regular animation. <laughs> In this wonderful, flexible world, tree limbs on a small sound stage become tree limbs hanging over huge canyons. Back in the studio, director Bakshi takes his live actors through another carefully staged sequence. Thin, tubular scaffolding becomes the sides of castle walls. A beautiful actress becomes our animated heroine. <laughs> Stuntmen apply their craft vigorously. filming of the live action, it is most important that they don't hold back their strength. Animals are created from cranes that lift men off the ground. These cranes and trucks become the fierce prehistoric creatures never before seen. 
This artist takes the white walls of the sound stage and magically turns them into forests, jungles, mountains, and castles. The photos, the rotoscope photos, are just, a, just a certain key ones out of a sequence. Uh, for example, here we have uh, Dark Wolf and Larn riding into what will become a lost city. Right now they're in a canyon area, but uh, in our reality, this will be a lost city. I give them a direction as to what time of day it is, the twilight. Uh, this area should be left clear here, for although our hero doesn't have anything, uh, doesn't do anything with that area in this particular scene, in the very next scene he walks back through here. The pencil drawings of the backgrounds now have to be transformed into full color paintings. These two painters have the responsibility to create the mood and final sets that will appear in the animated movie. As far as the actual technique goes, uh, for the most part we use a simple technical procedure. We just start out with a big wide brush and lay the thing in. Uh, very scrubby at first, and then as we went, we'd uh, gradually uh, tighten the strokes down. We had to try to keep the time on each painting very limited because there was a number of paintings to be done, over a thousand for the film. And uh, then we developed details gradually using smaller brushes and uh, picking out things where the uh, characters would have to register to. <laughs> Not only backgrounds help create this environment, but special effects like snow are put in and taken away at will. A scene of completed drawings from the animator is transferred from paper to a clear plastic cell by means of a Xerox process. A large quantity of cells can be duplicated at a high rate of speed using this machine. And I wipe each individual cell. And then placing it in the fuser, which is an ink drying process. I wait a couple of seconds. I take out the cell. Place it over here. Before the cells can continue on into their painting stage, colors for each of the characters must be selected and standardized for the rest of the production. This color keying takes place in the office of the color modelist. For this scene, I wasn't quite sure as to what the mood was going to be for it. So um, I made different color setup, as you can see, from a lighter tones of everybody to a little darker, and to even darker, almost silhouette here. Now, the decision was the director's as to what, how the mood of the scene was to go. And the final decision was this one. And the total final scene with the background elements all in place was this. Now, at one stage, there was even discussion about the, the character and how he should look, whether we would want him blonde or brunette. So there was this difference in mood and change. Totally different character. Once the colors have been chosen and approved, the painting department uses these colors and paints every frame of film on a separate cell. After a scene is color keyed, it comes to the ink and paint department, and it's our responsibility to apply the colors the paint is applied to the back of the cell, and uh, it can be overlapped as each color dries to make sure it's opaque. And then, when you turn the cell over, you see the results. Once the painted cells for a scene have been completed, they will be married with their background painting counterpart under the animation camera, resulting in the final piece of film. After slating in, I go to my exposure sheet, which calls for these two pieces of animation placed on top of my background, which is taped to the table. And with the foot control, I lower the flatten down on the animation. I see it's nice and clean, I shoot a frame. I have to make sure these are in sequence, or we'll get jumps 
in the animation to show up on the film and the scene will have to be reshot. The scene is approximately seven feet long, uses 240 pieces of artwork, and it, it goes by your eye on the screen in about five to six seconds. It's going to take me about an hour to shoot it. This unique and elaborate process you have been watching has resulted in one of the most exciting animated feature films ever made, Fire and Ice. It's about demons and sorcerers, beautiful women, subhumans, and young barbarians. It's the special world of Ralph Bakshi and Frank Frazetta. It's the dynamic and spectacular world of fire and ice.